Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what are my favorite theorems, my very biased collection, of course. Um, today, not really a theorem, we will see, because I'm going to talk about operates, and operates are, well, more a type of a philosophy or a certain type of approach to a lot of problems, actually, in modern mathematics. It's pretty beautiful, um, very visually appealing, and we will see what it actually is. So in some sense, it's, well, my subtitle here, it's some version of doing algebra and topology at the same time. Some very nice form of algebra and some very nice form of topology. So operates come kind of grew out of, um, well, homotopy theory in the mid of the 1950s, 1960s, something like this. Um, and have been found many, many applications throughout mathematics, mostly as an idea how to organize ideas, as an idea how to organize ideas, yes. So uh, as a way to organize ideas. Um, and yeah, so the point is kind of, you want to model multiplication and of course multiplication. Well, multiplication, it's everywhere, of course. And you model that in a topological fashion. And what you get is a definition which is very applicable well, in mathematics, topology in particular, of course, because it was born from topology, but not just in topology, also in uh, more general frameworks and even beyond mathematics in a certain way. So the beyond mathematics is mostly still work in progress as far as I understand, uh, but it's still already pretty impressive, at least in my opinion. I will briefly sketch um, what you can do, for example, at the very end of the video. Okay, let me get started. So let's do some pictures, uh, some mathematics, whatever you want to call it. And so the idea is following, and that's of course a very old idea. Uh, maybe not of course, but I think it's a very old idea. I was never really able to track it back. So, but it's, it, it's really, really old. And the idea is to draw multiplication. So multiplication, you want to multiply A and B. And of course this is A times B. No, not, not very surprising. And you model that by using uh, this kind of tree-like picture here, right? So two inputs and one output. So reading now from bottom to top. So here's in and here's out, right? Okay, so this will be the same uh, for all my tree type pictures. Okay, so two inputs, one output. You could think of that as a, a form of multiplication, right? So kind of modeling multiplication in a more topological or graphical fashion by drawing this letter Y or whatever you want to call it. So this symbol here, um, instead of just plain multiplication. And yeah, I mean, you can multiply not just A and B, but you could multiply A, B and C. Uh, and outcome would be A, B, C, of course. Uh, very nice. So you could do this with three inputs or with five inputs. What would it be? A, B, C, D, E, I guess, uh, whatever. And you can actually, a little bit confusing, but of course kind of trivial in some sense. You can also do this with one input. So you just have an A and you don't multiply it all and you just output A. So input A, output A, fine. And of course you can do this with any finite number of 512 inputs. You can multiply 512 numbers. So really I would like to think of multiplication as some version of a tree. It's a little bit more than a tree. I have decided that there is some input, that there's some output. Um, and kind of all of these trees here kind of, they handle multiplication over there. In some sense, a generalization of, well, let's say the algebra behind multiplication, right? So this tree obviously is not really multiplying. It's not really telling you what three times five is because you would need to uh, label the output. And I'm, should I? Yeah, I probably could. I probably can tell you what 3.5, uh, three times five is. Well, it was not all that hard, but anyway, so the tree itself, of course, does not encode three times five. The tree itself encodes the idea of multiplication. So, right, it's not really multiplication. It's kind of, we're modeling the idea of multiplication here. Anyway, so the, the task um, that, as I said, grew out of homotopy type theory or homotopy theory actually, uh, is to describe this algebra of trees. And as soon as we try to do that, we end up with the definition of an operate, which is then way more general than just trees. So let's try to understand the algebra of trees, okay? So that's kind of the task now. So the algebra of trees, well, where's actually the algebra? So where's some kind of multiplication type structure on trees? Well, it's pretty nice and pretty simple and beautiful. So you can just take a tree and you can stack a tree on top of a tree. So here you have my tree F here with, with three outputs, uh, sorry, three inputs, and G is the one with four. So G is the blue one. And of course you could uh, take the red one, 
down here and stack the blue one on top uh, right here and you get a new well kind of legal configuration it, you could still think of the well whatever you get here the f times g as one of those multiplication type trees right it's kind of the same type of object and you obtained it by stacking uh, two smaller objects together and the nice fact here is, or the nice point is, it is just, this is not the only way of composing. This is just one of many. Uh, so let's just label the inputs of F, let's say one, two, three, just, just some labeling to be sure which edge is which. And then you could have, in, in this case for F, there would be three multiplication operations. You could stack blue on the first edge, you could stack blue on the second edge, or you can stack blue on the third edge, right? So just, additional labeling of um, the inputs and you can just have a lot of operations now, right? And that would you have, if you would have now a tree with 512 inputs, you would have 512 ways of multiplying other trees to it by just stacking on the corresponding uh, outputs. That's pretty cool actually, it's a pretty cool idea, right? So stacking gives us these, well, <laughs> a lot of compositions uh, for the same type of pictures. And that's basically already what an operator is. And now you might wonder why I'm sticking to trees. And there's not really any reason to stick to trees. And that's kind of the power of operates. So here are also operates. Um, the first one is called, so the top one, is usually called the little cube operate. I will explain it in a second. The bottom one is very often called planar algebra. Uh, planar algebra is also a type of an operate. And there are zillions of other examples. So as soon as we understand those two examples and we already have the tree example, you definitely can come up with your own example very, very easily. Um, or you can look at the links in the description where there's a huge list of uh, well, possible examples. Kind of the only thing you really need is this scaling similarity that I'm going to um, explain now uh, along those uh, examples. Here. So it's kind of the same setup. So I have an F here. So this is my F, this is my G, this is my G. And I will have compositions because there's something labeled in F. So F is a, a little cube. Uh, so it's a cube with cubes inside, right? This is kind of the scaling property. Is it's a cube with cubes inside. And the cubes are labeled. So as, as before, just these are the outputs of the tree. So one, two, three, one, two. Um, and you can stack little cubes in cubes. That's the whole point. This is where the scaling comes in. So here is my input two, and if you think of these as being empty, right? So this is empty, then you can definitely stick this whole picture of the whole G picture inside of, well, in this case two, because I'm deciding to go operation two, and you get this type of picture. Um, the only thing you need to be careful about is that you didn't then relabel the in inputs. That's just what you need to do. So one stays one, um, then two, three, right? This is two, and this is three, and then the, the other one, uh, bumps up to four. But otherwise, it's really just take a cube uh, with uh, little cubes and put it in a cube with little cubes. And that's your operation. And you, of course, you could have put it in one or two. So you have the same same amount of or the, the same idea having lots of compositions. Uh, same down here. Um, so again, one, two, three. Uh, the little star just tells you how to input the, the other disks into those disks. Um, so this disks are decorated disks with a few lines here and the shading, well, right? So you could, you could do that as well, the lines and shading, and you could put the little disk with lines and shading into the big disk with lines and shading in exactly the same way. Put it in here. The little star here tells you how to put it in. And if you do this, for example, um, this little arc here will close here, so you should get this circle. Right. So, and again, you produce more input disks or you close input disks, and it's a huge system with a lot of operations. And these are just two examples. And so, in those examples, I personally find it's uh, very clear that what really matters here is that you have this scaling similarity, that you have something big, which is kind of repeated in itself, and then you can stack the, ten, the types of objects into one another. And that's basically what defines an operator. But here now comes the formal definition and the meta theorem associated to operates. So as I said, there can't be really a theorem in that sense because it's more like a philosophy how to attract problems. Um, so operates then should model a lot of 
different nice structures in mathematics or the sciences or whatever. Okay, enter the theorem or enter the philosophy or whatever. Um, so an operator is just this collection of sets. So uh, PI, PI are the inputs. So for example, uh, dist well, cubes with three inputs, cubes with four inputs, cubes with five inputs and so on. And just a collection of all of them, there's a unit operation, right? In the cube picture, this would be a cube with a little cube. <laughs> so uh, putting this into any other cube will not change anything. And you have the composition operations, uh, a lot of them depending on, well, kind of the situation you have. So you have N inputs and you can put in N different things. So one to N and they themselves have K1 to KN inputs. So you get something with K1 plus up to KN new inputs. And of course, this should satisfy some axioms, and the axioms you usually impose are associativity and unitality. And if you think about it for a second, it's really just those pictures. So unitality, you have this unit operation, and whenever you do it, you just do nothing. It's a do-nothing operation. And that's why, in this case, we had this funny uh, A to A multiplication strand, because here it is actually the unit operation. And associativity is, well, if you stack green on one, after you've already stacked blue on two, that's the same as stacking blue on two after you've already stacked green on one. And if you formalize that for kind of generalize that and formalize it, then you get what, what it would be associativity. And my theorem or my meta theorem or whatever is this quote from, from Stasev who describes operates really nicely in a, a what is paper, which is linked into the description. So um, it, it is basically, Whenever you have a good notion of homotopy or something like scaling or something, um, they will play, play a key role. That's basically what Stas have said. That's by reinterpretation. You can, you can read the quote right here. Um, so Stas have only talks about something related to homotopy, but um, nowadays it's kind of well understood that operates, ah, operates are more general and, and they catch you very, very general and turn around, turn up in uh, category theory and, and other instances. So here's a real world example of how operators turned up. Uh, in order for me to, these are useful, that's my main theorem. Let me just explain these are useful uh, again. With, here's another operator or a potential operator. So uh, the genetic tree, if you want, the phylogenetic tree, the one from Darwin, basically. So here's Darwin's famous, famous um, I think it was some kind of note in a book or something. I think, and this is kind of a tree here. And as you can see, this already has some scaling similarity. Um, so you have branches and each branch has a little branches and so on and so on. So this should be nicely described by an operator and it's a little bit easier to see in this not hand drawing. Um, so you have branches and a lot of little branches. So what else, uh, what can I say here, for example? So here would be dogs, I guess. These are kind of foxes uh, and dogs and foxes were separated roughly here. Uh, 10 million years ago, but of course, then dogs itself separate uh, several times and foxes separate, blah, 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 blah. And now that I look at this, I actually wasn't aware that the black beer and the virus are actually pretty closely related. Okay. Uh, anyway, that was off topic. Um, so clearly this tree has some self-similarity in the, in the same way as all the other examples we have seen from operates and definitely, um, people use operates to model those trees. I'm not sure about the actual status uh, of that program, whether it then in the end was really useful in biology, but secretly I think biologists were already using ideas from operates, just not formalized in, in the language of operates. Um, but you can, I think this is a pretty cool example because you can definitely see that using this self-similarity and some version of formulating it in algebra could actually be very helpful to organize uh, the phylogenetic tree in, in this case, because it really is just a really beautiful example of this self-similarity, right? So um, as I said, foxes split from dogs and then dogs split further and then wolves and dogs split and whatever. Uh, this kind of scaling type similarity. Anyway, um, so my theorem today was a little bit pathetic in some sense. It was more like selling the idea that, oh, this is cool. Um, but it's actually a pretty, really cool idea, and you can model a lot of things, not just in mathematics. Hopefully, my last example was kind of an, 
kind of a hint why this should be uh, useful more in more than mathematics or more generally than mathematics um, and operates turn out to be quite interesting and I have seen them around a lot. Uh, sometimes people don't call them operates. So as I said, I would suspect that, or I kind of suspect, I'm not an expert, but I would suspect that biologists already played around with those ideas in the phylogenetic tree way before it was formalized, just don't knowing the, the name. And that's also happened sometimes in mathematics. Sometimes people rediscover operates without really knowing um, the terminology or whatever. Another reason for me to try to, uh, well, um, promote this idea, which is certainly not my idea, but as I said, goes back to homotopy ideas from the 50s and 60s of the last century. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and I also hope to see you next time.